Uh, isn't that right, Matt? About 200? Yeah. From 19, basically from 1900 to 1916. In 1915, Harley came out with a revolutionary new idea called a transmission, so they can convert mm. engine power to the back wheel and go fast. Well, that put most of the companies right out of business. Mm. So somehow in 1916, this crazy guy named Traub builds and develops his own motorcycle. So he designed it, he made all of his own patterns and castings, poured the castings, poured the metal, machined the metal, and built the perfect motorcycle. It's actually light years ahead of a Harley or an Indian of its day, and it might be out of gas, but I think there's enough in it. There is some controversy about the world's rarest motorcycle, and if you Wikipedia, this is what comes up. In my opinion, it very well may be this motorcycle. In 1901, a guy named Oscar Hedstrom invented the Indian motorcycle, and you all have heard of Indian. They lasted until 53. Well, Oscar Hedstrom um, was really the man behind the American motorcycle. This was actually written in 1915 when Oscar Hedstrom retired, and it says, a man in the street once remarked, when I think or hear or see motorcycles, I always think of the Indian. This psychology may be applied further in the sense to think of the Indian as to think of Oscar Hedstrom as creator for the two are inseparably, inseparably linked. In the vocabulary of the day, Hedstrom was the man who put moat in motorcycles way back in 1901. Well, this motorcycle was built by Oscar Hedstrom in the tool room. This is a one-of-a-kind motorcycle um, that has two of everything. It has two stands, dual exhaust, two magnetos, two ways to operate the brakes, clutch, decompressor, and none of the parts fit an Indian. They look almost identical to an Indian, but almost every, there's a standard Headstrom 1913-14 engine. It's got his name on it because he was the founder of the company. But this machine that he built for himself, every part has some slight or major difference. So it's a one-of-a-kind bike built by the guy who really engineered the American motorcycle in his last year at Indian, so, and in original condition. So very well could be these two machines are number one and two as far as the world's rarest motorcycle and rare relating to me as an interesting oh. story or in this case an unknown okay. story. Mm -hmm. Toolbox. It came with one oh, tool. Pretty cool. It came with one tool. <laughs> wow. And that's the tool. Now you've all watched that stuff on History Channel about the spacemen and all that weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of space age looking? Yeah. It really is. So who was this guy? And how was Maybe he smart was enough to build his own motorcycle? Mm -hmm. And then brick it up in a wall for nobody to ever find out who he was. Hmm. So there's no date on it? Or? No, you, we can date it. The seat is a... The only thing he used from the aftermarket would be the seat, mm -hmm. the carburetor, and the magneto, and the rims. The seat was made by the Troxel Company from 1916. The carburetor is made by Shoveler about 1916. And the magneto is a Bosch about 1916. Hmm. That's what dates the bike. Hmm. So, I mean, have you looked for variations on the name, too? So, say it again. Look for variations like Traub is short for something. No, we, you know we we know well of the name Traub in Chicago. Mm. Okay, and there was some found so there was some Traubs that owned foundries where yeah. they cast metals, so that would be a possibility. Mm. But regardless of how clever or how smart you were, you still would have to be very well healed financially to be able to build mm. this thing. Mm -hmm. So who was this guy, and how did he ever do it? It's the mystery bike of the world. There was a story in. Uh, uh, there's a magazine called Motorcycle Consumer News. It goes to anybody who wants to read it. It's online, but it's also in print. And um, it tells about all kinds of things in the motorcycle industry. There was a short story about wheels through time in Motorcycle Consumer News that mentioned the name Flesher Flyer. This is a Flesher Flyer. And it was another one-of-a-kind bike. We had no known history on the Flesher Flyer, but he did cast his name in the footboards and his name's on it. Well, when this article came out in Motorcycle Consumer News, I got a letter from an 85-year-old guy in California who said that was my grandfather, and he sent me pictures of the four Flesher flyers oh, wow. that his grandfather oh, built. That's really cool. <coughs> so part of our work here is uncovering the various layers of history. An interesting note about the Flesher flyer, um, in 1905, the first motor vehicle crossed America. A guy named George Wyman went from Seattle to New York on a bike called a Yale. I have a 1905 Yale here. And if you read his little journal or his book, when he got to Omaha, Nebraska, he stopped at the largest bicycle shop in Omaha that belonged to Lewis Flesher. 
Hmm. Well, the bike came from Omaha, so I put the two things together right away, and then the subsequent information proved all of that. But if you look at the early pictures, this would be very much like the 1905 that he saw crossing America, and then these are his other variations of the Flesher Flyer that he built. So it looks like he had about a nine-year run in building his dream motorcycle. Hmm. And uh, Brennan, look at the footboard on that. Yeah, I saw that. Now push the footboard down. That does the brake. Huh. And there's a company now that has just came out with a set of controls for a modern bike that's got your brake and your clutch on the feet. Wow. Well, Lewis hmm. Flesher did it in 1913. Hmm. And some of these.